Uh, Matthew's going to be a couple minutes late. Uh, once again, this is kind of a free form space. So uh, everybody is uh, welcome to uh, join. Um, lots of stuff uh, happening in the uh, cash tokens world. Um, I've been working very hard on getting uh, tokenstork.com uh, to have uh, prices, uh, total value locked, thanks to uh, support from uh, Dagger at uh, Cauldron Swap. Um, also working on an ICO contract uh, and probably at... Um, <clears throat> At Token Stork, we're going to eventually have the ability to just fill out a form, basically to create uh, tokens, NFTs, and uh, and also ICOs. And you know, we'll see what else uh, people are interested in. Let's see uh, what else is happening uh, in the uh, in the space these days. Uh, once again, anybody is welcome uh, to join as a speaker um you know we can uh, talk about uh whatever uh you would like uh for example there is a <clears throat> what's it called hashes there is an app that i haven't had the chance to check out yet um damn i forgot where that is but it's it's something about hashes uh, Sidwell, did you make that? I don't remember. But anyway, uh, I think Cauldron is looking pretty good. Uh, if we visit the um, the danger zone, uh, we can see that um, the there the the um, Cauldron team is pretty liberally listing uh, tokens. Like there's a Peppy. Uh, Martin B. Hash is listed there. Um, BCHTV, Spice, uh, and Holy. Yeah, so I've gotten uh, some uh, listing requests uh, recently for Token Stork for Holy and Hash, so I'll be adding those as well. <clears throat> Originally, Token Stork was a... Um, uh, was just a vanilla JS app, so I'm, cha I'm migrating it now into a Next.js uh, app, and uh, that's going to permit uh, that to do a whole bunch of interesting things. Um, and so if we look at uh, on the cauldron uh, at um, pools, for example, I see like I've got a pool. Uh, I'm providing liquidity for X, my token XRBF, and uh, it's getting some constant use. I think I put maybe a million um, XRBF in there, and there's only about eight hundred sixty thousand uh, left. So people are buying it. I, I'm giving it away free in my tutorials, uh, so I'm not sure uh, why people are buying it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Yeah, so let's see. What else? Uh, what What is everybody working on in uh, Cash Tokens? Uh, you're welcome to to join as a speaker and, um, and let us know. Ah, welcome, Matthew. You're sorry for being a few minutes late. No worries. No worries at all. So I was just uh, telling everybody about how I... Um, been working on Token Stork, turned it into a Next.js app, um, and pretty soon we should have uh, total value locked, price, um, market cap, and then, yeah, you you have, uh, you're kind of uh, got an interesting standard, the idea of keeping the reserve supply with uh, the, um, the off head, right? That's isn't that called? Did have, isn't that called the uh, MBC? I forget what the MBC stands for. Yeah. So so I worked on this like this concept of marking reserve supply, but there's a section on how to do like uh, how to do issuance for fungible tokens, for like and in the BCMR respect. So it's a bit more elaborate because it thinks about, um, like multi-threaded smart contract. So you might have like an ICO with uh, 
or like a, an AI which has multiple safe supply with a, uh, I think it's You're kind of cutting out on us, uh, Matthew. Are you still there? Yeah, we're not. I'm not hearing you at all. I don't know if others are hearing hearing you, Matthew. Oh, and welcome, Sidwell, as a speaker. Hi, hi, uh, George. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? Um, right, thanks. Yeah, um, yes, um, I created that little Ashes um, uh, uh, app. Um, yeah, it was ba basically just a trial app to um, get more developers um, in the space. It basically, it's, it's something similar to what you try, you know, just trying to get um, the developers more used to the tooling and to used to the... Um, how to code with cash tokens and smart contracts because it is quite uh, tricky, uh, especially for new developers. So I, I really released it as a sort of um, a, 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 a template so that anybody could actually just see how the code works and um, how to actually get a real-world uh, React app working. Yeah, very cool. I've been meaning to check it out. Um, I'm also, um, so I just put the link to it as a comment, as a reply to the space. It's hashes.ashen.vercel.app. Um, I'm also kind of doing some stuff with uh, React, um, you know, for, for token stork. So, yeah, I guess I should look at your... Uh, your co is your code up on GitHub or where yes. is it? Yes, there is a there is a link uh, to GitHub. Um, uh, if you open up the smart contract page, you should be able to see a a link because uh, all, all my code is open source. Uh, the smart contract is open source as well. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Um, oh I, yeah. It, it, yeah. Sure. So, yeah. So. Thank yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I, I mean, I haven't really been working on it because I'm actually obviously <laughs> moved on to another project. So um, I'm, I'm, uh, that's really another one that I'm um, very excited about. But all, all this, uh, that, that one isn't quite ready yet for um, release. I am not, I'm not really um, open to discuss it quite yet. <laughs> But uh, I could say uh, maybe just draw uh, throw a hint out there that it uh, it, it, it will be quite a, a radical little app um, and system that, that that I'm trying because I, I, I think the, the 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 cash token space um, you know uh, all the all the all the tooling and all the um, primitives are there but I think what what people is lacking now is you know just the imagination. Um, how can we actually um, get all these uh, smart contracts and cash tokens actually working in 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 a really groundbreaking way? Obviously, um, uh, NFTs and and all of those things are are, are pretty nifty, but um, I, th I think people are, are are really missing a big opportunity here. There's there's big opportunity to, to, to really make really radical applications, radical um, innovative products, and uh, I'm, I'm, essentially that's what I'm I'm going to be focusing on. And hopefully I'll be releasing some more products um, very very shortly. And um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Yeah, I I have uh, a bunch of ideas that that I'm thinking about as well. One idea that crossed my mind because I was studying uh, on CashScript.org the whole um, the whole locking script thing because the ability to lock a transaction or sorry lock a a balance or whatever uh, or lock the ability to spend 
balance for X amount of time. Um, it's kind of a very, seems like a very foundational feature um, to uh, Bitcoin script. So it's thinking it'd be interesting if um, we created like a, uh, an easy way for people to lock some coins and then we kept track of it in a uh, on like a scoreboard on a website. Yep. And then maybe we could, you know, like reward people with with uh, you know a special cash token or I don't know. You know, we can have some kind of fun with that kind of yeah. No. Yeah. What What do you think? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I, I, uh, uh, that is actually a no brainer. I mean, that is actually pretty easy to do. Um, in, in, in fact, what, what I've done, even with this little, um, um, uh, little, uh, simple hashes for caches, little, uh, application, what I've done is I've actually, um, put in a, um, or what, what, what we call it, a, 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 a field, a, a field that can only get updated by the contact itself. So, so it actually maintains state. Um, and it, it, it's, quite, mm. it's quite radical because um, the, the contact itself actually knows what um, the conditions around it is like. Um, so, so, for instance, it, it knows the, the state of the game. So it knows, um, and, 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 and people can only interact with it with, um, with, with, with the desired results. So um, I'm lacking the words now to describe it adequately. But um, if, you, if, you, if you actually take a deep dive into that little app, and uh, you, you, could, you could possibly see um, what I'm getting at. Because um, what's really happening is that you could actually have a token that now knows mm -hmm. so, 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 so it doesn't only have a balance but it can also have a a a a a, a, steel, a, a field or a state so you can change it for example you could have a token that has a color so uh, and, and any color mm -hmm. and you can then um use that in the contract and 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 change that token's color um because um, at the moment, you know, we we, we, we kind of just stuck with one NFT, and that NFT has a particular state and it has a particular value. But with mm -hmm. with, 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 with what I've got in my co smart contract now is ability of, of of actually changing that NFT. So so now the NF NFT uh, will have a particular property, and depending on 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 what is allowed in the contract or not, you can actually change that particular property of that. NFT, and um, I, I mean, I mean, this opens up a, a real, real um, a mind blowing uh, array of applications. Because essentially, now we um, the, the the actual NFTs and smart contracts together is programmable. And I think this is what Jason, mm -hmm. this is what Jason Dreisner has been trying all along. And I think a lot of people. Um, uh, don't quite understand how how um, massive and how powerful um, these primitives are. I mean, they 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 can really really change um, um, the whole uh, token and in and NFT space, and obviously uh, Bitcoin and 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 and, 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 um, and the way it works for the for the whole world, really. One hundred percent. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Matthew is back with us as a speaker. Uh, hopefully his uh, connection is uh, a little better. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah so I'm, I'm and, uh, risking it now. And welcome also, Bally G. Uh, hi, hi. Ahead, yeah, is it, hi, Matthew. Is it working better? Hi, everybody. Yes. Oh, okay, that's good yes. to know. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm, tra <laughs> I'm traveling, so uh, it's uh, a bit of a... No worries. Uh, so, yeah, yeah um, no worries. can I Thanks cut... for joining. Can I jump back to the previous topic, or do you want to uh, continue on the uh, on the topic of oh, the primitives? Go ahead, yeah, yeah um, I wanted to. Yeah, guys, sure, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, guys, I, I've got to uh, um, drop off because I've got to uh, travel now, unfortunately, as well. So, yeah, thanks for the discussion, and thanks, guys, again for your holding the space. And um, yeah, we, we should really be trying to to do this on a weekly basis. Love it.
Thank you, Sid. Well, I really appreciate your contributions to this space. Thank you very much. Okay. Travel safe. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. 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 Yeah, so I, I know ab about this project, so uh, I agree with, with what you were saying about our primitive, so it enables a lot of cool use cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and I was, yeah. uh, to continue the previous conversation on the reserve supply, the reserve, sure. the reserve supply for uh, fungible this tokens. Oh, we still have some background Sid, noise. Sid, well, oh, you're still, still alive. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. here, let me see if I can. Okay, I, mute, I think I muted it. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so what I meant to say is that I, uh, I, I didn't get, like it was a, an idea from multiple people uh, of, of how to do continued issuance for fungible tokens. So there's a section on this in the cash token spec and also in the TMI specification. So the cash token spec uh, suggests to mark if there's different UTXOs that hold reserved supply to mark them with a mutable NFT. So the NFT have no use besides being a marker for specific UTXOs. Um, but this is not SPV friendly. So what Jason proposed in the DCMR spec, we have like to just keep the uh, reserve supply on the outhead. So it's a standard proposed in the BCMR specification. Um, so yeah, Deutsche Cash is the first fungible token that I know of to uh, to follow this uh, idea. Uh, but it's also being integrated in the Paytaka uh, token studio. So this is still an app being uh, in development, but I heard it should be uh, in beta soon. So this will also keep the uh, yeah, like reserve supply for your fungible tokens, the unissued supply in the outhead. So th this way, uh, for example, your token stock website can clearly differentiate bet between the circulating and the reserved supply. Definitely, yeah. And I'm working on integrating that, um, you know, this week. So. Oh, very cool, yeah. I think that's great. Yeah, so I caught that you were uh, making it into a Next.js app. So were you moving framework or uh, what was the recent work you were doing? Well, before it was just a simple vanilla, like you know, script.js and uh, index.html and styles.css. So, yeah, I was thinking about using Astro, but I decided it doesn't really, Astro is really better for content stuff. So, I don't know, Next.js seems like, I like Vercel stuff and whatnot. And so, Next.js seems like it uh, makes more sense. And then, and that's, that's going to enable me to, for example, Call, uh, connect to the Cauldron API using Electrum Cache on the server, but then still have um, fairly easy reactivity uh, on the on the client. Yeah, very cool. I think it's yeah a good decision, and I'm looking forward oh, to cool. to uh, seeing all this uh, new stuff in Token Stoic. Yeah, me too. I I can't develop it fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I've been working yesterday. I put in a very long day uh, trying to to get to uh, a point, and it's close now. But uh, at least on price, some of the other stuff I, I haven't dug into yet. But uh, it's very close. I, I replicated the previous app, you know, pretty easily uh, in the in the next JS uh, kind of format or layout or whatever. And then price, uh, pr I had price working, and then. Um, I, I was calling the, the uh, Paytaka indexer uh, API twice. So then I got myself into a bit of trouble trying to uh, normalize that into just uh, calling it once. So still working out some bugs that I introduced uh, as part of that. Yeah, and you can extend it as far as you want because we were brainstorming ideas. And I remember we talked about having uh, a separate page when you click on a specific like cash token, which could have even more information like the location of the authors, for example, or whether it be hash matches or yeah, maybe social media links. So yeah, there's a lot of possibilities to make it like into a, a big project. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I've got like a whole roadmap written out. And yeah, there's definitely going to be inner pages, uh, you know, at one page for each uh, token. And then, yeah, I have some other ideas. You know, we'll see, we'll see where it goes. But definitely I'm committed to... Um, 
you know, turning token stork into a really nice, um, you know, source for uh, detailed and up to the minute data on the cash tokens uh, ecosystem. Really excited awesome. about that. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. it's very important. Right? I, I think in other ecosystems, there would probably be some kind of ecosystem grant for this type of uh, project. So uh, I really applaud you to take to take the lead on this. Yeah, and I want to help you out if you ever need uh, any more help because yeah, I think it's such an important piece. Um, yeah, thanks. You you have been so helpful to me. Like you're like my mentor in this whole whole thing. So <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'll I'll definitely be calling on you uh, for some more help, no doubt. Yeah, and I want I want to contribute to uh, to the tooling for this as well. So like for the uh, fungible tokens, so they can more easily uh, manage the their reserve supply. So I know yeah, Paytaka is working on some very cool stuff, and hopefully they will uh, make their testnet version available uh, shortly. But then yeah, I want to uh, also make some tooling so you don't specifically need their app. So something like the uh, the uh, out tooling that I made, like the out updates, but then where mm -hmm. you can easily like uh, add the fungible token supply. So I know that you were also working on a program like this for your own use case, uh, George. But yeah, it would just be good to have general tooling, right? Open source. Oh, definitely. Test. Yeah. Yeah, for me, everything I'm doing here is also a learning experience. Uh, you know, so just to get me up, up fully up to speed. So, yeah. So that, that's kind of why, like, anytime I take on a project, I kind of want to see how far I can get myself first before, you know, I, I, I go and, and learn from, for example, your code or BCH Autist's code or Sid Bell's code, um, which is, I, I think, is a, is, a, is a good approach. Like, people, I think, if, you know, there are people on the call who want to get into this, it's a good idea to go through and read, for example, uh, uh, your Cashinize code, your Token Explorer uh, code, um, you know, your Auth up update code. Get get familiar with Chain Graph, um, you know, the Electrum Cash library, uh, stuff stuff like that. What what else do you think, you know, like people who want to get started uh, here should do? Like, is their yeah, first step? Yeah, it depends a bit on what you want to do, but uh, I think the, the main library, if you want to get started quick with cash tokens, is to take a look at the uh, main.js documentation. Um, so the documentation is now somewhat simpler because they stripped down uh, some parts of the library. Um, so yeah, the main.js documentation, I think it's really easy to get started with a one a single address wallet uh, with that software. So that's also how I started Cashinize. I saw that uh, Pat did some great work on main.js. And I just uh, built further, like built the UI around around this library, um, because yeah, libout is more low level and is probably uh, hard to get started with for uh, new people. And you also want to make uh, CacheScript as accessible as possible. And I think CacheScript has many, like has good documentation and many examples. So I think these would be the two, um, depending on your use case, to take a look yeah, at CacheScript and main.js. Cool, cool. And I see Dagger has joined us. Welcome, Dagger. Dagger is creating, along with his team, uh, the cauldron.quest, uh, cauldron swap site. Yeah. Hello, hi, 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 Dagger. Hello. So how are things going with uh, cauldron swap? Oh, they're doing well, going well. We have been, uh, we launched that like, developer preview, the unfinished version. And we have seen already that some tokens have uh, added liquidity, in including yours. And there are some swaps happening. So, yeah, no problems yet. So it's, it's awesome. Yeah, I, I love that site. That's the first DEX uh, on BCH, really. Um, and I love it. I think it's very cool. Um, you know, people can play with it at dangerzone.cauldron.quest. And yeah, I already I provided liquidity for my token XRBF. Other people are doing the same, and you guys have listed a bunch of tokens. It's very cool. Thank you. Yeah, we listed uh, everyone that contacted us. We listed, um, but any token can be swapped. You just enter the if you enter the token ID, even if it isn't listed, you can add liquidity and swap it, and it's uh, working very well. Uh, 
So yeah, at some point I think I will just um, show any token that has liquidity, just show it on the front page, because why not? Nice, yeah, and it's, I mean, um, I t I've read your white paper. Um, the code doesn't, like, how, how complex would you say the code is? Uh, it does, doesn't seem terribly, terribly complex. I would say it's uh, super simple. Um, <laughs> we kind of, <laughs> we kind of ex exploit the fact that a single UTXO can hold uh, both tokens and BCH. Um, and because, because when a UTXO holds both Satoshis and a token, then it can run like the full contract within just one redeem script without checking any other inputs. Uh, it, it basically works like this, that um, um, if you want to do a trade, it just does introspection. And it, uh, the first thing it checks is that you actually recreate the token so other people can trade. And the other check is that um, you don't take more money out than you put in. So you can like swap between them. And there is a very simple formula to, to calculate that the value you take out is the same, is is equal to what you put in, and uh, and yeah, and there is then subtract some fee for the liquidity provider. Very cool, yeah. That's a uh, there's like a mindset sh or paradigm shift that you know I started studying cash script and Bitcoin script that was a little surprising to me might be of interest to uh you know people who are just getting into this is basically with bitcoin scripts it's almost all not completely but almost all about covenants i.e limits on how you can spend something right and so then you essentially the script is all about well you can only spend it if it meets this condition you can't spend it if it's like this etc and then Am I right in thinking that creates kind of a template, and then the the actual script has to be has to be passed in and has to comply with that template? Is, am I thinking about that right? Yeah, you basically tell the script says how the transaction is supposed to be like designed, um, and it's a very different way of thinking rather than thinking in like global state methods. You think in like if if I take this UTXO in, what do I want the transaction to look like? And in our case, we say that if you take this UTXO in, you have to recreate a new UTXO that looks the same. Um, and you can't take any value out of it, but you can like swap between the two two tokens in them, which is Satoshi's and on a different token. And that's basically it. It doesn't really care about like other things. You, like you, it only cares that if you take this UTXO, you have to recreate it. Other other things about the transaction, it doesn't really care about. So you can uh, you can take in many cold run contracts, or you can take in other contracts. Um, yeah, you can do. <laughs> it's very flexible. Yeah, so I agree that it's flexible and also what you said before that it's uh, actually very simple because it's uh, in your white paper, you write uh, the script in opcodes. Uh, so the, the low level, yeah, the almost the raw script itself. And it's still quite uh, easy to reason about like what is happening. Um, yeah, so I, I wonder for, uh, because we're more of a technical uh, audience, so what kind of tooling did you use? So I imagined that you would have used without IDE, but then recently I find out that you guys haven't uh, experimented with that much. So can you talk a bit about yeah the tooling or the how did you arrive at the or how did you make and test the script? Well, I basically wrote it in uh, Python. <laughs> I just used like a test framework in Python, and I didn't really have a debugger, so I just mo modified the Node software itself to output some debug information in the script interpreter. <laughs> So yeah, there was very much lack of tooling at that point. But, oh yeah, okay. But that was mm -hmm. early on, so I think the tooling is getting better now. <laughs> and did you <laughs> in the mid in the meantime did you have a, a look? Uh, did you have the chance to take a look at the bitout IDE and the bitout tooling? 
um, Bitcoin Cash artist. He he put that contract into like Bit idea templates, and he helped me out, and uh, yeah, that was uh, <laughs> very helpful. He helped me debug some stuff with it. So yeah, that, so why, why, I th why I think it would be helpful to people working with Raw script is because you can visualize the stack like uh, easily. So for for a cache script, we uh, the tooling is pretty good, but the debugging is still an issue. So we still need to work out uh, tooling for debugging. So what people have done in the past is either just modify the contract and leave some parts out to see which checks are failing, or the other option is to yeah to go uh, low level and to check out the compiled bytecode. And then use the IDE to see, uh, yeah, what uh, opcodes it, yeah, you know what opcodes it compiles to, to, but then see how the stack mutates the items you push on, uh, you push to the script, and then see which check specifically, like which line in the validation, which of the verify checks actually fails. Um, so I think, yeah, for that, the without IDE is a uh, great tooling, and I, we want to integrate it more with the uh, cache script. Oh, nice, that would be very useful. And the thing I miss the most is a good debugger. I really mm -hmm. miss uh, Meeps. If, if you, it was like a debugger that was part of the BCHD suite. Um, and you, it was basically debugging the bytecode, but it was uh, <laughs> very helpful. Unfortunately, it doesn't work anymore because of the upgrades. But uh, yeah, we had Meep integrated with CacheScript too. So many people developing with CacheScript used uh, Meep. So you would have, yeah, you needed Go installed. So that was a, you needed to set it up. So it was a bit more work coming from a JavaScript ecosystem. Um, but yeah, it was very handy. To, so you could just walk through each of the opcodes step by step and see the stack uh, mutate. Um, so indeed, there, yeah, you brought it up, but I, a few other people have also brought it up that I missed uh, Meep as a debugging tool. But now with cash tokens, it would need, I think you, you also discussed it, it would need more transaction context. So it would need access to the UTXO. So it either needs to fetch them from an actual network or you need to provide them. Uh, so it would need to be extended to still uh, yeah, be able to use those new introspection and cash tokens uh, opcodes. By the way, welcome to uh, Bitcoin Bay. Uh, as a speaker, feel free to join in anytime. Um, yeah, and then something more with regards to Meep. I think uh, the new, like the uh, operator in who stepped up as a maintainer for uh, BCHD, he has on his uh, roadmap where he has plans to also update Meep, but of course uh, this this is a long process after BCHD has upgraded. So, oh, that's awesome. Do you know how how it's going upgrading BCHD? Uh, yeah, people have asked about it. I think Josh Elitorp, uh who was one of the maintainers previously, uh, has, has asked, uh, and he said that everything was like going okay. And I think Josh has also helped with. Uh, explaining some parts of the code base to him. So it's uh, it's good that they're at least, uh, yeah, talking, right? So uh, Sidwell mentioned earlier that he thinks um, it's uh, so important to bring more imagination into um, the cash token space to inspire people. Do you guys have any any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I can go first. So, yeah, I think Please. there's a, a few different things. Yeah, we need we need uh, we need pretty much more of everything. Like uh, people sometimes mention, we need better documentation, or we need more projects, or we need more develop. We need more of everything. But yeah, one thing for sure that would help is also more imagination and creativity. So what I'm trying to do, like uh, today, I think it was announced uh, that the Doge Cash airdrop would be happening. So Doge Cash is just a fun project I made. It's like uh, the, the one of the first coins. It was created on launch day of the cash tokens, and now a real community organically has to has begin forming around it. So I thought it would be fun to do an airdrop, just give give some away, so it would be more equally distributed. And uh, I got in touch with the. BCH Guru team, and yeah, now we're doing uh, 
a million, we're giving giving a million uh, Doge cash to each of the first 4,000 Google holders. So I, I think that's one way to bring more fun uh, fun into the ecosystem, just like uh, giving fun tokens away. And then also with the Cash Ninjas project, we're trying to do yeah something more with cool art and lore and a story. So uh, I hope those two are like examples of how I am trying to do it. But it would be cool to hear from other people like more thoughts and ideas. Uh, so definitely. Yeah, those are very cool. Um, yeah, as a storyteller myself, I'm I'm interested to see uh, what comes out of uh, Cash Ninjas. Uh, it sounds very cool. I've been tossing around ideas as well about how to kind of mix like uh, my science fiction uh, writing with um, with a Cash Tokens project. I, I don't have any solid ideas yet, though. <laughs> Oh yeah, but it's good to yeah, yeah like play around, like yeah, uh, to think about this stuff because maybe you will you will end up uh, on a cool idea, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, one one idea I've, uh, that I've seen discussed a lot is, I mean, a fundamental building block. It's not it's not terribly imaginative, but but a fundamental building block of a DeFi ecosystem is a stable coin. And so people have discussed uh, like um, over collateralized, you know, algorithmic uh, stable coins or, um, you know, maybe like forming uh, a Dow slash Wyoming uh, LLC, you know, getting some people together and, you know, maybe raising like a million dollars, you know, that's stored securely and then issuing, you know, tokenizing uh, those assets on chain just to kind of kick things off. Yeah, so with regards to stable coins, I think the the best, the ideal situation was to have an established player like USDC or even Tether uh, issue, or even one of the smaller ones like uh, Binance, USD, or I'm sure there's a few others, uh, have their stable coin and cash tokens. Um, yeah, it could also be like Wyoming with a smaller organization. Yeah, I don't know who to, um, I don't know, like I know some people at those different places, but I'm not sure how to go about, you know, getting them interested, you know. And it's a shame that we couldn't, uh, you know, transition uh, USDT over to cash tokens uh, before they they uh, st- they ended their SLP uh, issuance. Yeah, I think the generally the migration path from SLP to cash tokens hasn't been worked out well at all. So we just saw most of the SLP tokens just uh, stop the the project just uh, discontinuing of mo- or moving to SBCH, which then had its own problems. Um, mm. Yeah, so I don't. It's only uh, Spice Coin, uh, which I recognize from the SLP ecosystem, and even they haven't really built their uh, SLP bridge yet. So. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate with, uh, that there was no tooling for this. Yeah, I saw someone in one of the groups offer um, offer to finance uh, like some tooling to migrate uh, from SLP to cash tokens. Or, or maybe they just expressed interest in it. I'm not sure. But um, that could be cool. Yeah, I think it was a combination of uh, missing... Yeah, missing tooling, but also a lack of education from coming from the developers. So I feel like a lot of the SLP developers did not know that cash, uh, cash tokens was uh, most around the corner coming to Chipnet so that they could start developing. And then they were looking at uh, SBCH. Yeah, and then it wasn't clearly communicated that SBCH has this trusted setup and uh, custodial risk with CoinFlex. So yeah, in hindsight, of course, hindsight is 2020, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, there was so some failing. Way, this... Yeah, f- failure oh, of communication, yeah. I think. But go ahead. Mm, yeah, no, I was going to say. By the way, uh, this is uh, anybody is uh, can join as a speaker, so anybody's welcome to do so at any time. Um, yeah, another project that I'm, uh, I think I definitely need to do uh, within the next few months is so the uh, adoption work. Uh, that we did in uh, Latin America, mostly in Venezuela, 2020, 2021, we collected a lot of photographs. Uh, Like we have probably like 2,400 photos of newly onboarded BCH users and probably more than a thousand of newly onboarded merchants. 
so I'm thinking about um, setting it up so that uh, the, you know, say X user, you know, is onboarded. I have their photo, you know, I'll send that. I have all their contact information. So I'll send them a, a message and they go to a, a website and they can mint their photo as an NFT uh, on chain, you know, and then, you know, trade it or, or whatever. Yeah, this would be less like a collectible and more like a, a personalized memory. Uh, like, a, I, I, for me, it's, it's, it makes me think of buying like a, if you go to a, a real coaster park, like a, uh, they also take some, some photographs and you can buy like the unique photographs of the, of the special moment. So it reminds me of that. It is theme parks. Yeah. 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 And then perhaps have some kind of follow on offer to, uh, to get them to stay, uh, you know, to stay more connected. Uh, Cause we, well, we're slowly losing connection uh, with them. And that, another thing I was thinking about was getting some um, partnering with a, a, a coffee uh, company here and kind of tokenizing some coffee in a special package, like a BCH branded package, uh, similar to, to what Dagger did with uh, with his socks. Yeah, so Dagger, maybe yeah, it would be interesting to hear if people, like, uh, did you send out socks already or if people... I claimed their physical socks, so how is this going? Not yet, but uh, soon. <laughs> yeah. Okay, soon. Yeah, so uh, we said the sale would be three months, and uh, it will be three months. And then uh, Hollywood has promised me that uh, the socks will be ready by then. <laughs> okay, good to hear, good to hear. I'm not personally designing the socks, but uh, <laughs> he's, he's working on it. And I'm looking very forward to it. <laughs> that will be awesome. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, those socks are now going for like I think zero point three eight uh, BCH on uh, at Cauldron Dark Quest, right? Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we sold most of them as well, like the first day. But then, then I've been trading back and forth, which is uh, exactly what we wanted. We wanted to see that the uh, tech software worked, and that, that apparently did. <laughs> Yeah, as uh, George mentioned, it's a cool demonstration to link the digital, like the NFT part, the blockchain part to something real world, real world assets. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a fun demonstration for sure. <laughs> At some point, they were actually going for, I think, uh, one PCH each, which was insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a lot for a pair of socks. <laughs> Although they're they're limited edition, right? There's there can only be five hundred uh, created, isn't that right? Yeah, that's yeah. that's correct. And uh, and that those that were go unsold will be burned, so that will be less than five hundred as well. So mm. time to get a part of your hist of the history, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm looking, looking forward. To... Yeah, I'm so looking I'm looking for. To... <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm looking forward to a very new socks on uh, an event. <laughs> We're showing off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another thing I was thinking about is if, like, there are a lot of uh, card games that are in the uh, public domain. Like, if we could uh, replicate or build one of them, you know, using cash tokens, you know, on chain. So I actually uh, talked to one of the projects. Uh, I'm not sure if people are familiar with the early Bitcoin uh, token project. So the early token projects on, on Bitcoin were uh, Rare Pepe's. So these were like the, the first collectible NFTs on Counterpart, on the Counterparty protocol. And the other was uh, Spells of Genesis. So Rare Pepe's are still quite famous. And I think they, they still trade for... Uh, a lot of money because counterparty is still active and then there's also spells of genesis and spells of genesis is the first uh, nft like gaming nft project so it's a yeah a bit hearthstone like so a, trade a tradable card game uh, so a bit comparable to mtg uh magic the gathering uh yeah fully digital and then you really own your cards so i know some of the early 
early edition cards are very rare. And they, yeah, so I, I contacted them and I told them uh, about cash tokens. So, and they're, they're following closely. Uh, they, they still they said they still think it's uh, yeah, like early, but uh, they, they would be interested in doing some, uh, yeah, some cross promotion or some collection or some. Uh, I thought first I thought about the idea of reviving the early uh, counterparty tokens. So each of the early, like before, to, before the fork, before 2017, mm -hmm. each of the counterparty holders, uh, in theory, those tokens exist on Bitcoin Cash too. Of course, it's not a the real version because the project lives on DTC, but you could add it up to all of the 2017 holders. They could let, uh, get like a cash tokens version of their original cards and those could be like a, just a fun tradable collectible. So that was something I was thinking about. But yeah, how many of those 2017 holders still have their, their, their key pairs and will they, yeah. will, will then import them in a Bitcoin cash wallet which supports cash tokens. So there's uh, yeah, quite a few steps involved. So I'm not too sure, but the, the initial reaction was at least uh, enthusiastic and I looked into cash token somewhat. So uh, that may be yeah, pretty positive about the uh, interest from other token projects. That's a cool idea. I like that. Yeah, so maybe in the future, who knows? Uh... Yeah, I wonder also if we could like uh get a uh like a patreon clone going you know because i think you know like you mentioned uh like grants you know that's one area where uh you know like bch doesn't ha quite have those deep pockets that maybe other chains do and also it'd be interesting to get um you know like some people have been kicked off of patreon you know, it'd be interesting to make like a, uh, you know, an unstoppable Patreon, perhaps. And that could actually get new people, new money into to BCH uh, for the creators so that they can uh, support the creators they really love. Yeah, so I think uh, Sahid is, because Slipstarter is a bit similar, right? So I think Sahid mm -hmm. is working on something like this because he wants to make a smart contract version of Slipstarter. So the big benefit of this is it would no longer have the minimum pledge that Flipstarter has. And it would also mm -hmm. have the benefit that you can issue NFTs for contributors. So they have some yeah, some proof like a Flipstarter and you, then you can identify them and send like goodies to them or merchandise. And you can also add uh, stretch goals to that design. So many Patreons, they don't have one goal to raise, but then they have stretch goals. So that idea would also be enabled. And I know Sahid is working hard on it. so. Uh, I'm hoping he will do something like uh, he will actually build a platform. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, but although Patreon is less of like a, um, I don't, I'm not sure what you call the flip starter model. Like you have to raise the whole thing, right? Or you get it's like kind of an all or nothing kind of uh, model. Whereas Patreon is more of like a, a monthly payment, like more of like a mecenas kind of model. Ah, uh, yeah, so the models indeed, they're not exactly the same, but uh, yeah, of course, both can exist simultaneously. But I think Sahid is yeah moving in that direction, so that's uh, all I meant to say. Cool, cool, yeah. Also, by the way, welcome uh, Bitcoin Cash TV as a speaker. Yeah. You can uh, yeah. feel free to jump in anytime. Uh, so one thing I, I uh, am reminded of, of or I want to talk about is because Sahid is also working on uh, the Wallet Connect ID now. So he, he was uh, talking to me about uh, the pros and cons of Wallet Connect and how to integrate this with this new uh, assurance contract uh, ID. So mm -hmm. the, the Wallet Connect, yeah, as some people uh, might have tried it already in the Cashionize fork. So there's a beta version of Cashionize where you can use Wallet Connect and connect it to a beta version of TopSwap. So I'm actively talking with Spot and uh, over the uh, coming weeks, we should have it merged. So there should be a new version of Cashionize and a new version of TopSwap out, like uh, both the official versions, but then with new features. So you can connect your Cashionize to TopSwap and for example, list your NFTs. Um, so really looking forward to that because it's a more general standard than the, what Paytaka uses. 
So Petaka Connect is great, but they can only do it because they are a browser extension. Uh, so it is Wallet Connect is the uh, benefit that you can use it on web wallets, on mobile wallets, and even on hardware wallets. For example, Ledger supports uh, yeah, so interactions with Wallet Connect on Ethereum. So we could we could have that too in the future with this Wallet Connect protocol. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so. You know, for people who are not familiar, Wallet Connect uh, permits kind of like that um, MetaMask like functionality where you know you go to a, we a website and it has a button to connect your your wallet, and then you can uh, perform actions on the website that um, that interact with your wallet. You know, so yeah, that's that's an awesome uh, DeFi building block, if you will, right? Uh, sorry, could you repeat the last sentence, uh, George? I just said uh, that's an awesome uh, DeFi building block. Oh, yeah, yeah, it really is. Right? Yeah, yeah it really is. So for, in TabSwap, you really notice because uh, it, it knows just all the NFTs in your wallet. So uh, it's, it's easy to click on one and say, I want to list it for this price. Whereas with these integrated web wallets, for example, the, the BCH Bull product or even Calderon, but Calderon has, does not have a, like disadvantages of this. But then you, you first need to send it to the web wallet and then trust the, the web wallet to do whatever it is doing. Whereas with Wallet Connect, you, it, knows, it knows which NFTs you hold and then you can uh, you see the transaction you are about to sign in advance. So you, maybe it's still hard to understand what the, that the transaction is, do, is a top swap transaction but you can still see which inputs are moving and what the outputs are. So, uh, yeah, so it's a, a first step to a more like templating system because as you talked about with Sidwell before, uh, smart contracts are actually templates and you plug in specific parameters. So it would be great if wallets would be so advanced as they can recognize the, the templates. So you can recognize, oh, this is a top swap transaction involving this NFT at this price. Um, yeah, so that's what we're building towards. I feel like Wallet Connect is the first step and certainly not the destination. So just getting uh, up to speed with the rest of the crypto ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great work. And I think uh, it's Mainnet Pat that's uh, leading on that, right? Yeah, he has spearheaded this and uh, he has implemented it in Cache and I, So I'm just uh, testing and reviewing his code. So get it actually maintainable. And as I said, it, it's still experimental. So and there will be maybe changes to the standard, uh, like the BCH version of the standard. And then, yeah, we need to tweak the, uh, the cache nice version as well. So that's why it needs to be maintainable, of course. But yeah, Pat has done great work and he has spearheaded this uh, together with the Paytaka Connect. So yes, uh, it's done a lot of great work on both. Cool, cool. It will be, well, nice, be, be nice to have every... Every application, the DeFi application, doesn't have to have its own wallet. For instance, I didn't really want to make a web wallet in Cauldron, but there wasn't like uh, anything else that existed, so I had to. And uh, creating a wallet and maintaining it is uh, more than I wanted to, but uh, that was the state of things then. If I had Wallet Connect in the beginning, I might probably have used that instead. And it's also easier yes. for the user, right? Because uh, then it does, don't have to write down um, mnemonic seed for every application they use. Yeah, that's a good, a good reason indeed. Yeah, I had uh, someone uh, contact me about that. They were confused about how to do that on uh, Cauldron. Um, but yeah, it is. It is like I don't know what here. What I do is like I created a Petaka a fresh Paytaco wallet, and then I just put that uh, seed into, you know, Cash and Eyes or um, Cauldron or wherever I need it. But you also don't want to be putting your seeds on random web pages. <laughs> so, so. Well, that's true. That's why I created a, a fresh wallet, uh, and I, I keep very little on that one. Yeah. 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 But that's a great point. But at some point, you maybe you want to add liquidity, and then 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 you start to be adding more money onto the wallet, right? Because you want to earn interest, and the That's more true. liquidity you add, the more interest you get. It's the game, yep. name of the game. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, so the, the end goal is still indeed so the wallet can recognize the template so it can say that, oh, this, this Caldeon smart contract is a known template and it's on some list that I trust or the user has to say, I trust the Caldeon template. And then it can understand, oh, this is a control, uh, control on template for this specific token ID at this price with this amount of input. So it's, it can be communicated more clearly to the user. But yeah, there's a, a few more uh, important steps involved to get to that point. So a wallet can actual, uh, actually recognize templates. So maybe it's uh, possible to hard code one template, but to have a general system which works for multiple templates, which can be yeah, very diverse. It can be a BCH bull contract or maybe a last will contract, or then a, a Caldeon swap contract, so yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome, if you can uh, actually show what is happening, rather than just show some inputs and outputs. <laughs> yeah, there's more discussion on this now, so General Protocols has a, had a, uh, like a Twitter space, an X space, to discuss this idea of having native wallets and how it should be designed, and Jason Dreisner, uh, so the creator of the, the cash token spec, uh, spec is now working on this uh, wallet engine. Uh, so yeah, I think this is the direction we are uh, all moving. There there's like a general need for it. So many people are pushing in that direction. Yeah, I was gonna bring up that space. Uh, that, that was, I think the conclusion seemed to be that there sh might be like a contract store similar to like uh, an app store. Yeah, I didn't have the chance to uh, listen to it in its entirety. I think I caught uh, half of it. Um, but I think, yeah, something like trusted, trusted registries could also work. But yeah, something like an, an app store where you need to browse and uh, yeah, it could also, it's, it's also a possible design. I think there's the ID speech is still quite big because uh, MetaMask in the Ethereum space, it hasn't, it has not worked with templates, so it really trusts the site that you are visiting. So it's still a bit of a trusted model where you, you go to a website and you use Wallet Connect, you are signing something, but you don't fully understand what you are signing. So you still need to trust the app that, yeah, that it is doing what it says it is doing and it has a good reputation. So it's not ideal how it works in Ethereum and we should strive to improve on it. Hmm. Well, uh, we're nearing the one hour mark, so uh, I want to invite anybody uh, who's listening or who's already a speaker uh, to ask any questions or uh, feel free to pitch any projects, uh, you know, any cash tokens projects, et cetera, or BCH projects. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks for holding the space. Um, I just wanted your thoughts on this. Uh, I'm interested in the idea of decentralized marketplaces, things like a decentralized Amazon or decentralized Uber, a Airbnb, it's, it's, you know, so on and so forth, or decentralized most social media networks where people can transact with each other. And I guess the, the idea behind it is that the idea of Bitcoin was for peer to peer transactions where, you know, two individuals can interact with each other without having the ask permission of a third party, either a government or a bank or whoever it may be. And the problem with just transactions is that, you, you know, you still need a platform, you know, that's useful to users where they can make transactions, you know, um, theoretically, if you came up with a, these decentralized platforms, you know, like users can interact with each other without government oversight or taxation, you know, so on and so forth. Um, you know, that being said, there's a lot that would go into that. Um, you know, there's, you know, the static file hosting, you could do that with IPFS, you know, you can do, you can use like a pinning service if you need to scale. Um, you know, there's an issue of domains, you know, because well, like once you give your credit card information to a domain, then that's an issue. Um, uh, and then, you know, like the, the one, one thing that I've been looking at recently, because I've looked into the EVM space as well, is something called Compose DB, which is built on Ceramic Network, which is built on IPFS. Uh, I don't know, has anyone had any experience with this or not? But um, the idea is that the, the the database is hosted on a node, you know, so it's theoretically decentralized. 
Um, it, it's supposedly the uh, ceramic network is blockchain agnostic. Um, they don't support BCH as of yet, but they, they have a, a methodology where you can submit a pull request. They have a, another coin supported. Um, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, so if I can jump in, I think for decentralized social media, what I'm seeing is many people and many, like, uh, yeah, just people in the space, many, a lot of mindshare going to Nostos. So Nostos is a decentralized protocol. Um, and it is also, yeah, chain agnostic, as you mentioned, so it can have multiple coin integrations. I know it has some lightning integration, but then some people, like John Old Fugball, are working on BCH integration for Nostos. And I think that the marketplace is even harder to get started, like a decentralized marketplace, because I closely followed the attempt of Open Bazaar. But then uh, Open Bazaar had this issue where you need, yeah, you need net network effect on two sides. It's a chicken and egg uh, problem. So you want a lot of merchants, but the merchants want a lot of users. So in the beginning, you're stuck and you need to do a lot of outreach to get both sides uh, involved. Yeah, and it's just very hard to build this network effect. So I agree that this is something like a holy grail for something you want in uh, crypto and BCH more specifically. But it's, yeah, you need to acknowledge that it's very hard to build and you need to try to learn from previous uh, failed attempts. But because a lot of people have tried this and yeah, it's a huge undertaking. Um, yeah, so I hope this, uh, this is were my thoughts uh, and I got it again now. So uh, thank you everybody for uh, listening to the space and I hope there is some more good uh, discussion. Uh, you. Thank you, yeah, Matthew. Thank really you. appreciate your contributions. Yeah, so talk to you next week, George, and bye-bye, uh, everybody. You bet. Yes, I, Carl, I think that's very uh, interesting, and um, I'm very interested in that as well, because I think that, you know, an unstoppable marketplace is uh, kind of a foundational element you know, and one issue is, you know, what if people are going to try to sell, you know, illegal things, right? Like how to not, um, you know, how to, and and I think one way is, uh, like, I think Steam it, uh, or Steam, they enabled that different interfaces to the blockchain could just filter things out. Um, and so I think the idea of uh, different interfaces but anybody can up follow whatever the protocol is to put stuff on chain and to use IPFS, et cetera. I think that's that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely check out Agnostic and Open Bazaar and the trials and tribulations. Um, but yeah, I, I had a similar thinking of that. Like, um, you know, there's there's lots of things that I, I wouldn't do personally. But I don't think prohibition is a good methodology. But that being said, like you, you can make it so people can mark their product as illicit, you know, um, and then you can you can have different interfaces or filtering mechanisms to, you know, so people only see what they want to see. So, but yeah, that's great. Yeah. And I think a prerequisite there might be like uh, identity and uh, reputation. Right. Because if someone is abusing the filtering system, right? That has to be, um, there has to be consequences for that, right? And also maybe also dispute resolution because you may have like, um, say a group of people who are like checking up on things, right? And so somebody may say, oh, this shouldn't be listed uh, he or this is improperly categorized and uh, you know the the other person may say no this is so those kinds of things there needs to be a process for that and uh, there are interesting projects working on that like uh, Jure, uh, Aragon and uh, there's another one I can't remember the name of um, and those are running on uh, Ethereum or other EVM chains and uh I don't know. I always get emails from them saying, Hey, come try it out and uh, we'll pay all the fees, you know? So it'd be interesting to get those kinds of things to uh, working on BCH because they, they might be prerequisites, you know, for a successful marketplace also. Yeah, I'll definitely check it out. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thanks for your question.
So uh, does anybody else want to jump in? Uh, questions, uh, pitch your project. Uh, let us know what you're doing. Uh, you know, invite listeners, because this will also go up on uh, YouTube. Uh, invite listeners to uh, to check out your project, anything like that. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, Lomi here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Go right ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm being uh, quite late for the spaces, um, but I decided to join anyway. Um, I'll be really, really short. Uh, so tomorrow we are organizing a tournament. Um at Slime Shadies. Uh, if you're unaware, cool. we are um, hmm, web free worms type of game. And uh, tomorrow at 1930 UTC, uh, we'll be hosting a tournament live event uh, where we will be streaming, live streaming on Telegram. Uh, so feel free to join. Uh, the entry fee is really low. I think it's a few cents. Uh, we set it up just a few cents just to, you know, people to play into, uh, not to play big bucks yet. Um, so if anyone's interested, just get in, uh, we'll talk about our project. I don't want to keep you guys here, uh, too long. Very cool. Yeah. Slime Shadies is an interesting, um, project, uh, game. I think you, you guys might have some NFTs, uh, and, the, and you're already, I think you're already active on Cardano maybe. And now you're coming over to BCH as well. Is that right? Uh, we've come from AVEX. Um, but yeah. Oh, AVAX. Okay. Yeah, uh, we do have uh, NFTs. Um, we are we're planning to launch a NFT mint for BCH as well. But you know, we're not rushing anything. We're going slowly. We decided to implement the game first uh, for the BCH community, and later on, uh, once we're ready, once the art is ready and everything is uh, aligned, uh, we might be doing a mint here for BCH as well for. BCH community to use uh, to use those NFTs as one of the one of the use cases or um, some use cases is basically revenue share uh, from all the from all the revenue types that we are still implementing or for those that are already implemented. Uh, but yeah, I, I, don't, I don't want to keep you guys too long here. No, it's okay. I uh, appreciate your contribution to the space. It's good to hear from you. And yeah, I love projects that do like revenue share and whatnot. Um, like I have some projects in mind that basically um, I just want like the community to own it essentially, you know, and share in the profits. Because um, I, I think that's one of the, the most important or the most powerful, um, you know, use cases in Web3 is to, to hand over ownership to the people who actually use uh, the app or the platform or uh, or whatever it may be. Anybody else want to jump in? All right. Well, I guess I'll wrap up. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being here today, for participating, for listening, for asking questions. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Matthew. Thank you, Dagger, Slime Shadies, Carl, uh, Thanks everyone who joined today. Um, and uh, we're going to keep doing this every Friday at the same time. And um, let's keep building Bitcoin Cash. Thank you.